Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jeremy Bennett. This is a bit of an experimental first for the LLVM room. It's, it's a panel session and we have one throat microphone. Um, it's intended to stimulate a discussion. Um, quick show of hands, how many people here have worked or are working on LLVM? And I'd include in that anything in the LLVM toolchain. And how many people here are working on GCC or anything in the GNU toolchain? Okay. How many people here um, have dipped into or are dipping into both? So actually there's a, there's a number. Um, <coughs> the point is there are quite a few people who work or have worked on both projects and it's possibly time we try to work out how to work better together. We had a first session at this at the GNU Tools Cauldron um, and you can go and watch the videos online, the link is on the uh, abstract for this. But we wanted to go into a primarily LLVM audience and the LLVM Foundation suggested that FOSDEM was where you were going to find the broadest spectrum of views, um, uh, unlike, not in California. Um, and so that's what we've got and we have three panellists to lead the discussion, Arno de Grand Maison, uh, Pedro Alves and Tom Trome. Um, I'm going to let each of them briefly introduce themselves and then what we're looking for is a discussion about how we can work together and in particular afterwards we'll look at the recording and see if there are some concrete <coughs> ideas of things we can actually take away and do rather than having a nice comfortable chat about them and then nothing happens. So here's the aid memoir and we can cover anything else. It's not just GCC and Clang LLVM. It's the whole tool chains, LLDB, if you're LLD, GDB, Binutils, and so forth. So, without further ado, let me ask each of the panelists to just say a couple of words about themselves. Hi, uh, my name is Tom Tromey. I work at AdaCore on primarily on GDB, but in the past I've worked on um, GCC and. I also worked on Rust for a while, so I worked on LLVM and LLDB as well. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Pedro Alves, and uh, I work at Red Hat on the debug uh, team. And I, I've been working on GDB for for a while, and I'm a GDB maintainer and uh, contributor. And I'm Arnaud de Grand Maison. I'm working at ARM. Uh, I spent a long time uh, in, the, in the compilation team at ARM, uh, working on LLVM. And before joining ARM, I was in uh, startups uh, doing on a custom DSP, uh, working on a custom DSP and a custom uh, processor. And there I, I was in charge of the tool chain, which was obviously LLVM based. Can you speak up louder? No. Because with the mic, there's Okay, it just goes to the camera. Okay. Should we start over? Okay, so this is intended to be a session where everyone participates, the three at the front, are to stimulate uh, discussion. Um, I've put up on the basis of the meeting we had be at the GNU Cauldron some areas that I think matter and where we could work close together. Language standardization, ABI compatibility, interoperability between the tool chains and also channels of communication. How do we talk together? Do we need different conferences and so forth? What I'd like is each of the panelists now to um, give their first thought on the one most important thing we could do to improve cooperation. <coughs> I should have expected to be on the spot. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm very bad at planning. Um, my, you know, my primary focus is on debugging. So that's what I know the most about. And when I look at the debugging world, I think um, it's actually in a worse state than like the, the sort of the user language world, you know, like writing C or C++. And I think that one thing that would be very good to do is to have GCC and LLVM sort of um, explicitly cooperate on improving the DWARF standard and documenting and sort of uh, uh, standardizing the extensions that they both use. So I think that would be a very fruitful 
area of cooperation. Wow, you've said everything. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I, come, I come from a debug background as well, and uh, actually my work on the compiler side is not very meaningful. Um, uh, looking at the current state and uh, current like duopoly in, in the debugger land in open source, uh, I see two aspects uh, that would be nice to improve. And one of them is an area of focus right now for our group. It's on the quality of the bug information. Uh, we're, we've been looking at the quality of the dwarf that the compilers emit. Uh, does it represent the, you know, the original source accurately? Uh, does it support the whole set of dwarf, uh, the, whole, the whole features? Uh, which compiler emits correct output? Which one doesn't? Which one needs to be fixed? It would be nice if we joined efforts in the testing side, in you know the testing frameworks that ex that validate the quality of the bug information. Uh, I know that there have been efforts on the LLVM side about this. Uh, it would be nice to chat about it. And uh, that was the second point, which I forgot right now. <laughs> what was it? It will come back. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so it's a, a bit hard to be in the third position there. <laughs> but uh, so to, maybe to differentiate a bit, but uh, it, I think it tightly links to what you've said, uh, and I think where we could probably better cooperate uh, as communities is around the language standards. Uh, my understanding of the language standards, or the standards, uh, because it, if we consider Dwarf as a language or not, I don't know. But uh, the thing is, my impression is that mostly in the standards committees, we have companies are represented, and uh, the, if whether this is LLVM or GCC, uh, this is more tools for experiment, experimented, but experimenting with that uh, with the new standards. And uh, but this is not representing the whole GCC or the whole LLVM community as a whole. So I, I don't know if I'm right there. But uh, I don't think we, we have LLVM only representative or GCC only representative uh, at, the, at those standards committees. So, uh, on kind of a tangent that touches standards, again from the debug side because that's my expertise. Uh, for example, there's been a push on LLVMs for OpenMP support, I think. And yeah, I'm sure. And um, for debugging OpenMP, there's a st standard co called o OMPD, which is OpenMP debugging. Uh, and that requires implementing a library that exposes a standard interface. And what's happening right now is that LLVM is implementing that library. And uh, GNU side also needs to implement something like that, exposing the same library. And other tool chains, like the Intel compiler, also is doing the same. And we have a, a mixed match of uh, a matrix of debuggers cross um, runtimes, like GDB against the LLVM runtime, GDB against uh, OMP from the GNU side, and L LLDB against uh, GC, and you know, the matrix. It would be nice to see about sharing that uh, infrastructure, maybe sharing even the code, and that can only work if we cooperate and discuss and experiment together. And the other point which I had forgotten earlier came back to me. It's <laughs> I wanted to mention like the the uh, like LDB uses the remote protocol from GDB and it has its own extensions. And it would be nice to cooperate in the sense of the ones that are generically usable would be standardized and documented in a single place. Uh, and the longer we take to get to that point, the more we will end up diver diverging, and we don't want to end up in a place where tools end up more incompatible. Uh, sorry about talking only about debug stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, at this point, um, I'd like to throw out the same question to the uh, assembled multitude. Um, <coughs> If you'd like to put your hand up, so we catch it on tape, um, if you make your point, I will try and summarise it and repeat it. So, from the audience, anyone here have a view on 
the most important areas where we could improve cooperation between GCC and LLVM? I think a neutral, somewhere of a neutral forum for discussion would help in that you've got a set, so basically LLVM mailing list, you have GCC mailing list, you can be known in one and not the other, and there's sometimes intimidating to cross the gap. So I say more places where you can sort of tread on a more neutral place. Okay. And, yeah. If you just say it, I'll repeat it for you. I do not know if it's already done, but GCC has a very big test suite uh, of accepted tests by, uh, sorry, uh, by the uh, GCC community. <coughs> we could throw together the tests for maintaining code quality. So the, the suggestion is that GCC's big regression test suite could be brought together and have it as a test suite for LLVM. I have to say that professionally we've been doing that for 10 years, <laughs> so it's there, but it will be good to formalise that so everyone can pick it up, they don't have to come and get our magic copy of it. The, Any other comments? The tortured tests have been integrated uh, a couple of months ago into LLVM tests. Suite. Excellent. So we now have some of those there, so that's great news, uh, the torture tests are there. Which are the ones that cause pain? Well, let's, no, let's talk about that for a second. I, I'm really curious about this. Like, like I know GCC incorporates some things from LLVM, sanitizers or whatever, and those are just imported periodically, and maybe there's local hacks, I don't really know. On what basis are the GCC torture tests integrated into LLVM? Do patches go back to GCC? You know? Is that... Because I feel like this is, this is an important thing where I feel like, like, for instance, this thing about cooperating on Dwarf, which is territory I'm really comfortable with, right? Like there, part of the process has to be like a social commitment by the maintainers to say, if you're going to extend the Dwarf, you have to follow their, our agreed upon thing. You have to upstream it or document it or whatever, you know? But that requires like a commitment from both sides. But... Um, you know, I'm concerned, like, just hearing that, and if you don't know the answer, like, is it a fork of the GCC test suite? That, to me, seems like worse somehow, you know? It's, my it's a bad outcome. Fork, yeah. I, I didn't do the work, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Um, I, I believe it's actually a, uh, it is a fork, and it works by actually having a blacklist of tests that won't run. That's been done once before, and, of course, then people end up running a 10-year out-of-date test suite. So I think there are two good points there. One, it's good that the cooperation is happening. But the second is, actually, if it just leads to another fork, then it's possibly not long-term valuable. More comments from the, uh, the assembled multitude? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think one thing that, that works well that I see occur um, sometimes between projects is uh, just practicing uh, careful communication and respect kind of thing. Um, it's, it's very common... Um, for people, uh, like, I try to dissuade people from saying, oh, why was this implemented this way or not that way kind of thing, and, and generally be respectful of the competition, I think helps in all discussions on either sides of things. Um, one thing that I wish we had more of was um, more of, um, like, an RFC proposal would be interesting for certain language extensions um, that, uh, like, right now, either side will ship extensions without input from the other uh, and not necessarily take these to the ISO standards bodies. And I think that's okay, but then um, typically multiple implementations will work out different kinks or interesting edge cases or things don't compose a certain way with other features. Um, and these typically only kind of shake out once you get more than one implementation. So the comment being made is that 
if you have divergence of extensions as part of the language exploration, then people writing application code have a nightmare of making sure it works on both GCC and LLVM. Sorry. I, just about the documentation thing, I think one issue there is, you know, so if you work on GCC, you're familiar with GCC, and if you work on Clang, you're familiar with Clang. There may be no one who can write that document who, who understands the subtleties of the divergence in some particular feature, you know. But I really liked your point, and it really reminds me actually of like what happens in the web world where, you know, different browsers collaborate and features sort of don't um, become web standards until they're implemented in multiple browsers. And uh, they have, you know, like you said, more or less an RFC process. And I think that would be an excellent idea. Well, um, so on the RFC process, maybe one thought I have of where it might get hard to implement it is that the more people you involve into a discussion, the longer it takes, and it seems sometimes... I've seen in the past incompatibilities between two, ch two tool chains appear because in one community there's a quick need to implement something would be relatively straightforward, and in the other community they don't see the need as quickly. And so one community moves ahead because there's a genuine need for it, and the other community doesn't react uh, as quickly. So that, that might be something to overcome, maybe not necessarily completely impossible. From my point of view, I would say, uh, my personal experience is I find most of the difficulties to come from probably the ABI side in that whenever a new feature gets implemented, quite often without realizing there's some small binary interface all of a sudden that gets created and it sets a de facto standard and it doesn't get documented. Maybe that's because I work more on backend side stuff and it's just it seems almost, I, probably every week, at least every month, some small extra addition happens to a binary interface somewhere. And, and I would say the majority of binary interfaces go completely undocumented. And so I'm starting to wonder, would it make a difference if we tried to recognize, oh, there is a new binary interface. That's at least just documented. So it becomes more visible. And it's not just three people who implemented it. And you have to reverse engineer from code. Would that be helpful? I have the impression that just documenting it would not solve it because because when you're it's only when the other team goes and tries to implement it even based on documentation that they realize oh this corner case wasn't considered and it's only them that will notice it because the original team just implicitly thought it worked that way didn't even think it would be a possible design point change uh, so it feels to me like a lot of this is going to be based around communication and just reaching out and uh, and being friends, making bridges, uh, and uh, break away from that mindset of them versus us. We're all just toolchain people who work on the same kinds of problems, uh, and uh, we should, you know, I'm adding this extension for the C language. We should know, I should reach out to that friend on the other side and see what he thinks about it and hash it out a little bit, at least, uh, in public in preference, uh, and m make that a way to shake out some things before they are done and documented it. And then what, ha what s frequently happens is it, it's released and shipped and out, and only a release later uh, is the other side aware Oh, there's an extension for that. Uh, let's try it, and then it's already too late because it's already on the in the wild. So the point is, you know, just reaching out. And to build on the on the point uh, you, you raised uh, earlier on, uh, and also on what Christophe was saying, with the fact that the two compiler teams may not be working at the with the, exactly the same agenda for different uh, reasons. Uh, I think what is, would really be important, uh, apart from having uh, some documentation for the ABI, uh, would also be to have some tests, uh, because just the description of the ABI is often not enough. Uh, ABI can be quite uh, subtle, and the corner cases uh, are not uh, often not described in the, in the specification or why you are doing things this way. And uh, so there you really need tests. Uh, That's an excellent point. That's 
An excellent point, and it's something that you can do in your own team without reaching outside, right? And it should—it should, it feels to me like that's just good a good practice. engineering, right? If you're not doing that, you're doing it wrong. Okay, we've got a question at the back. Patient waiting. Uh, yeah. Patient waiting. Right? So, So the the question was the small device. Uh, there's a no. C oh, the, 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 the standard library of uh, Microsoft has been open source last year, so we plan to involve them a bit in this standard discussion. Uh, it's a very good question. So Microsoft have out out, 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 out open sourced their uh, library last year. Um, yes, I mean I think it, the whole point is to bring in all voices. Microsoft is changing. <coughs> you know, they were at the. GNU Tools Cauldron this year, which I think is a first and a you know, very positive and big support. They are changing as a company, and you know, yeah, of course, the more the the open, the whole point about free and open is it's inclusive. So that's a great, great point. Uh, yeah, two questions here. Yeah, so that's somehow related to specification and testing, but writing test is not the most tremendous task or the most enjoyable task. And whenever we develop a new security feature or a new optimization, uh, we could write the tests as a whole community and in a generic way, and then everybody could implement it and take advantage of the test suite. That's some area where both from an engineering point of view and from a time span point of view, collaboration is fruitful and not very difficult to, to set up. I had wished that for Fortify Source there would be a, a test suite that I could use. Okay, that, that's a good part. I, from my personal experience, I know the GNU regression test suite is based on uh, uh, Deja GNU features that say, is this feature supported? And if you write those generally above, you can give them GCC or LLVM and it'll work out whether the test can run. The problem is it's, it, 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 the GCC test suite is huge and very old, and only the best and newest tests actually work like that. So the real world hits a bit there. Um. I have a similar question like, like Sesh. Uh, he made a talk about um, changing the compiler from GCC to, to Clang. And I saw many projects that try to standardize, don't really use uh, GCC specific stuff. And I think it would be great as a user to, to have more interop interoperability. So where I can, can just uh, change my compiler without having to think much. And I think it's, it goes uh, currently the other way around. That some projects just require to use uh, Clang. And if I had to have a platform that isn't supported by Clang, I'm, I have no chance to do anything. And yeah, that would be great as a user. Oh, Here, I, I'd like to say that in, on one hand, uh, interoperability is a, is a nice goal to have. The other thing, I mean, if you try to do uh, embedded software, uh, it's often a good idea to test it with multiple compilers uh, because they will make different implementation choice and you need to be to accept that uh, what you have written is not portable. So, I mean, that's the point of interoperability. It's just a subset will be interoperable. Uh, so that's, uh, I mean, it, it goes both ways. So. Uh, I'd like to ask the panel what they think about deprecation as such, or at least not de deprecation, I'm talking re-implementation. So if, like it or not, all the calls for collaboration, there will be features that get pushed ahead further in one than the other, and then the other will try and catch up as such. Is it sort of, in some ways it's akin to code review, you do something downstream, you then move it upstream, and it gets code reviewed, it gets changed. And is there a, a way of, deploying newer features as maybe some kind of tentative extensions or is it anything that you put in binary for life? Uh, I guess is there rule, rule for, say, communities to introduce things as sort of, okay, you can use this, but it's not standardized yet, whatever, it may change in the future, that type of thing. That's a good question. I think we ought to ask the panel and I'll start with Arno this time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm not sure I understood uh, the fully your question, but uh, so around for, for, for the deprecation, 
it's a bit hard because you, as long as you have one user uh, who does not, uh, who stubbornly refuses uh, to update, upgrade his, co his code base, uh, you cannot fully deprecate uh, the stuff. Uh, or he will have to stick with an old version of the tools. You know, I'm, I'm far from, the, from an expert on you know, the compiler side and the runtime side, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm, um, there are some things that have been deprecated. Like I'm thinking, for example, on the glibc side, uh, there are facilities to, if you really, really need to, you can create a new entry point and use, uh, uh, <laughs> help me, Mark. Uh, symbol versions. Symbol versions, exactly, thank you, uh, to like, uh, the old binary will still run and, and link at, at load time with the original deprecated version, but if you try to compile again the program, it will be using the newer uh, ABI entry points. Um, so it's possible to deprecate things on the runtime side. On the compiler side, I'm not sure what the answer is. I kind of feel like if it's there, it's, it's ask, there forever. Ask, ask Serge. I'm sure he, he, he may have found some uh, some comp compiler flags uh, which are dating from very, very old versions uh, of the compilers. Okay. And, and the compilers That's are just ignoring them just so that the build scripts don't fail. Uh, yeah, GCC does that. Yeah, GCC does that, but that's not specific. <laughs> And it's not specific to compilers. I mean, LS has uh, obsolete flags, and they are still there and uh, use and just an app. So that's common practice. Uh. So, although software was named soft uh, as opposed <laughs> to hardware, okay. uh, once, once in there, it becomes a hard stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's the command line aspect. I will, and on oh, the coding okay. side, on the language yes. support side, is there any, like, um, When we will we get rid case? of C89 or before? <laughs> yeah, in 40 years. <laughs> also, I, I think there's, you know, I think one thing is you have to differentiate between, like, the different cases of compatibility. Sure. Like, for source language, in a way, it's easier to just say, we will no longer accept, you know, K and R declarations or whatever. Those are just errors now. I mean, I don't know if they are. I'm just saying it hypothetically. And then people who want to have a 30-year-old C compiler should go find one. You know, um, what's hard is ABI compatibility, especially if, you know, what happens pretty commonly is someone implements the ABI and they think they did a good job, but they made a mistake and it's not found out till later. And then if you think about it, like if you just have one tool chain, right, like GCC made a mistake, well, they think it's better to just leave the mistake. Yeah, now it's the standard, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, even though it's ridiculous, right? But it's more difficult when there's two compilers involved because you can have this thing where you have parallel implementations and one or the other makes a mistake or they disagree about what's a mistake or, you know, it's undocumented and so they both made a choice, you know, and even those cases can be treated differently. You know, you could say, well, as communities, we'll have a commitment to following the standard. So if you catch us in a mistake, we'll, like, make our users suffer a little and change. But that has to be, like, a two-way street. Everyone has to agree to that, like, as a social thing. And then for the case of, like, um, implementing a new feature, like, it's not documented and you want to make some choice, you have to also, com you know, make it like a, it's a social problem. You have to say will commit to sending a note to some ABI list to say, hey, this is what we're planning to do. Stop us before, you know, we strike or whatever. Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, question, I guess, to Peter, uh, to reinterpret your question. Were you asking more about, like, how, do, how could we possibly ship experimental features with thought of potentially deprecating it in the future? Yeah, so what I'm thinking less about, say, for instance, think, thinking about implementing things that are already standardized, like things in the front end. I'm thinking about, say, say I've got some new binary security feature. So I'm just going to pull stack protection out of the uh, out of the hat here, and it will work in a certain way in a compiler. That's a downstream binary thing. The compiler can choose how it implements it. But it has, as Christoph mentioned, some form of ABI. 
then when, say, Clan comes up to that, does it need to match precisely? It might not be possible to match precisely. Is, at the moment, there's, I'm talking about for things like that that are kind of not in the area of anything that that's really written down. How do you get it so that, say, for example, you can maybe transition to a form that both can accept and that might involve changing? And I think partly it's also got to be driven by the community. I think um, when there's demand from users that Clang and GCC work together, they will do it. When there's not demand in areas that nobody cares about, it's not going to happen. So I think a lot of it is to the community to decide what happens. So yeah, one of my the reasons why I remarked writing, trying to produce some documentation once you, if you realize you're introducing some new binary interface, even if it's a small amount, was just to just to try to make it a little bit easier for other projects to to start using that interface. Um, one thing I so it would indeed be really nice if we could come up with introducing binary interface without from the start it being forever making it more evolvable. Um, I don't think there's an easy way to, to solve that problem. And the only um, partial solution, I think, maybe for some binary interface might help a little bit is just try to make sure there's always some kind of versioning there. So if you need to change, at least it's very easily detectable. Something like that might be one step in the right direction. But then it would need like general agreement. Oh yes, every time we recognize we're introducing binary interface, we'll also need to, we'll make sure there's some metadata somewhere easily interpretable, records a version, something like that. Okay, thank you. At this, at this point, um, we're quite a long way through our discussion. A lot of issues raised here. I want to turn to solutions. Now, we've had one suggestion, which is for the, having a neutral mailing list, so you don't have to, that is neither GCC nor LLVM for discussing neutrally. That's a good one, I think, to take away and see what is the organization that can host such a list that will be trusted uh, and respected. Um, we can take that one away. I'd like to now open up to the panel for um, solutions. We've got um, one LLVM director here. I don't think we've actually got her GCC um, uh, uh, steering committee member, have we? No, no, no. no. Um, but start with you, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Solutions. Oh man. <laughs> start from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Third compiler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Solution, new standard, right? Uh, I don't know solutions. Uh, you were mentioning ABI uh, versioning. And it reminded me of work that Red Hat is, is doing, and maybe I'll ask Mark Wheeler to help me with this. The, the Nix project, what's the name of that? The, the, the binary tagging thing? The Abigail? No, not that. No, that's Doji's. Nick Lifton's. Uh, Anobian, exactly. Can you talk a little bit about that? See what I've done there? <laughs> Mark, tell us the solution. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, it's not a solution, but what Anobin does is uh, record all the compiler flags and all the, uh, 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 the, the, the ABIs it can recognize in uh, object files. So uh, it, it's not a solution, but you, you're right, I hadn't thought about that. that uh, uh, there is, uh, I don't know how far Nick is with the Anobin plugin for uh, uh, Clang, but he was working on that. Uh, uh, the, okay, Anobin is a, a plugin currently for GC where uh, it will uh, output elf nodes uh, for all the object files. Uh, 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 in which it records all the compiler uh, flags and uh, uh, ABIs it's, it's currently respecting. And uh, so when you link your object files together, uh, your binaries have all the flags ever used in all the compiler uh, versions. And he also is working on that for uh, Clang. I don't know how far he is. Um, it's at least an interesting thing to do. Uh, uh, Fedora does it now, uh, uh, distro white, uh, so that you can see what what is actually being used in a whole 
distribution, which is nice. No. I don't know whether the liquor is extended. I don't know whether that work uh, progressed to a point where the linker, linker can reject incompatible <coughs> ABIs, but it could be done in that, uh, like it yes. could be used to, you can use it to query the whole distribution, see what, what's the ABIs you're using. <coughs> and for, I, I think that for versioning, we could use it to you know, validate the, whether the ABIs are compatible, which version are you using. I feel like that could help. So, yeah. Uh, so I, uh, I mean, if if we, if we want uh, collaboration uh, or better collaboration, not to be just wishful thinking, because I think everyone is in agreement that it's a good thing to do. Uh, if we want to be pragmatic, it only happens on on real projects. And I think the, both our communities are already collaborating on a need be basis. Uh, I know, for example, uh, at ARM, uh, the, the LLVM and the GCC people uh, are working, uh, I mean, are in the, in the same building. It was not the case for some time, but now they are all together. And uh, we try to, uh, to make sure, because ARM has an interest, that it is uh, to have proper support for, the, for their product. Uh, and uh, there are other cases where I think there, there is collaboration. So could, are there other projects where we could have a broader collaboration? Uh, and then, okay. Good point. So. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when I listen to this, like, I think uh, uh, in some cases an RFC process, something like that, a shared way to communicate directly between, like, compiler developers is good. For backends, like for ABIs, I, you know, I think there are already existing institutions for that handle many of these things. There's like the C <laughs> committee and the C++ committee. There's Dwarf. Some of those, like I know more about Dwarf, which I think is like institutionally kind of weak, that need to be strengthened, you know, and um, supported by uh, like these communities. But um, some of these areas, you know, I've like I think the ABI situation is similar. It needs a little more uh, commitment from developers and stuff. And then some of the areas are terra incognita, right? Like linkers are not documented at all as far as I can tell and just work by magic. And like that would be a good thing to change and maybe create a new institution, you know, to handle that, right? So I don't know. We're, um, we're, yeah, we're, we're running just a bit, bit short of time, so I'm going to actually draw things to a, a conclusion now. Um, we've heard issues where we could do better. We've heard a willingness to do better. We've heard some concrete suggestions, mailing lists, projects that we work together, some detailed technology from Mark and, and Pedro, the possibility of needing new institutions. There's one other I think we've missed, which we did once. We had an LLVM cauldron the day before a GNU Tools cauldron, and 40% of the people who went to one went to the other. Um, and that was a very good I meeting, particularly the evening in between when we all came to the same um, reception and all drank and ate together. Um, my, uh, so my two penneth there, I think possibly we need to revive that idea. So actually we do talk to each other, because actually sometimes human interaction only matters. Uh, it does matter. I'd like to thank you all for your time. I'd like to thank our panellists for giving up their time. Arno in particular, who came up here personally just for this session. Um, so I really do appreciate you travelling up here. Um, please carry on the discussion. Send your feedback. If you can't find anyone else to tell, send me an email. Thank you very much. <laughs>